So the funds may want to ask for some information. And uh, for us, for example, our funds, we use a third party group. So we don't need to see anyone's financial information. We just have you send it. It's actually a group owned by an attorney. You're listening to Alternative Investor Mastermind, where we do a deep dive on alternative investment opportunities and the lifestyle it can create. Join Jack Krupe as he presents actionable tips and tricks in doing passive real estate away from mainstream strategies. Go beyond the usual fix and flips and try less explored yet rewarding investing ventures from multifamily properties, mobile homes to cryptocurrencies. Do not miss this opportunity to escape traditional assets and finally create wealth without Wall Street. Now your host, Jack. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Alternative Investor Mastermind. Um, I just got back from a uh, trip to Hong Kong and uh, it was actually for my graduation from my uh, MBA program. I did a global uh, MBA through Kellogg and uh, Kellogg got a partnership with uh, HKUST in uh, Hong Kong. So I actually finished classes in um, early 2020, but then because of COVID, we never had a graduation. So I uh, spent uh, some time in Asia, caught up with a lot of uh, great classmates. And uh, they also had a symposium where we talked about economics uh, a bit. And uh, uh, Professor Rao, who uh, taught us both macroeconomics and value investing, uh, really did a deep dive on uh, uh, what's going on with interest rates and uh, really just capital flows. Um, you know, one of the the, the things that's uh, really helping the U.S. right now, even though the higher interest rates may be painful for uh, certain real estate projects in the U.S., is that it is really recruiting capital. Um, you know, we have higher rates than Europe, so the large money, the sovereign funds, even with the U.S. deficit and everything else happening, um, it's very attractive to park money into the U.S. And this is something that really um, is historically new. Back in the last 50, 100, 200 years, uh, the, the money would flow to emerging markets. So Britain would, would really send a chunk of their money to the US even in the 1800s, uh, just because there were higher returns here. Um, and now um, oil rich countries and uh, you know a, even a good chunk of the, some of the third world sovereign wealth funds actually send their money or the third world countries are parking most of their money in the US for safety. So uh, interesting, um, interesting information. So. Uh, while I was there, I also had a lot of conversations with uh, foreign uh, investors, classmates of mine, and uh, thought I'd put together uh, some thoughts on foreign investors and the opportunity to invest in the United States. So, um, you know, why should a foreign investor invest in the U.S.? Um, really, there's a multitude of reasons. Um, number one is it's a stable and uh, transparent market. The U.S. real estate market has you know, a long-standing history of stability and transparency. It's a legal framework, well-defined property rights, robust regulatory system, and a secure environment for investors. Uh, there's a diverse uh, set of, of options from uh, residential, commercial, industrial, and um, you know, really gives a chance to diversify. Uh, strong economic fundamentals, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you have a very resilient economy. Um, you know, the higher interest rates are actually good for the U.S. dollar. So uh, for those that are worried about currency, uh, it's, a, it's a great way, way to uh, park money uh, in, a, in a more stable uh, currency. And uh, a lot of people I talk to, they... And this is actually very similar to what uh, a lot of traditional U.S. investors uh, think is uh, uh, their first thought is, hey, can I buy a condo in New York or buy a condo in Miami? And uh, I want to talk about some of the benefits of investing into commercial property rather than just trying to buy a condo. So first things first is condos are not very scalable. Um, you know, maybe you could buy one and if you're looking to maybe live in it in the future as a vacation home, then it's maybe a different story. But in general, if you're buying a condominium in Miami or New York, you're also competing against owner occupants. So the cash flow you're going to receive is generally not as good as the cash flow you can, can make investing into a uh, commercial real estate fund, a syndication or something that has positive cash flow. So I would recommend for foreign investors to take a serious look at multifamily syndications, at self-storage, 
and uh, the other syndicated asset classes because those asset classes are based on um, positive cash flow and you're going to, I believe, overall receive a higher return on investment and consistent quarterly cash flow um, rather than a, a condo halfway around the world that uh, you know is going to underperform with generally a lower cash on cash return and where you're, you're really banking on on long-term appreciation. In that case, you're, you're, you're really gambling. Um, what, what we focus on, where I think most foreign investors would be best suited, is to invest in a value-add multifamily apartment building syndication where you're buying a building, it has positive cash flow, there's 100 or 200 units, and then over the course of three to five years, our, our partnerships or and our funds will be renovating a number of the units in the building. When we renovate the units, the rents go up. When the rents go up, the value of the building goes up. And that economy of scale also provides you a safety and diversification as well. You're not tied to one unit in Miami. You're part of a larger building. And or if you invest in a fund, those funds may own multiple buildings. And so you have the op opportunity to have investments in say Florida, but also have a building in Texas. And uh, that along with diversifying into the US economy in general will, uh, I think, provide a, a more diverse portfolio. So how does it all work? Um, I, a lot of foreign investors uh, have, have expressed some concerns about filing US tax returns, or even about how do you open a bank account, or how do you get started. So if you've never done anything in the US before, um, we do uh, know a number of uh, CPAs and, and uh, attorneys that can help out, um, but the very simple, um, at least high-level information is you can apply for an ITIN number, and um, you know, with that, uh, if you're visiting the U.S., you can actually generally open a bank account if you have that number along with uh, you know, some copies of some information and just proof of, of you know, where your funds are coming from just so it's not... Uh, you know, so you're proving it's not laundered money. It's not that difficult to open a bank account. We, we, we know a number of investors who, you know, have foreign investors who have accounts in the U.S., and it's not that hard. Um, there may be a few banks that will still do it virtually, but I think most banks you do need to, to make a trip here. Um, but that, that part's not that hard. There's enough accountants and CPAs that can really help you through that process, you know, setting up a limited liability company. Um, it is important to have an LLC uh, just because of some of the estate laws here, where if you're going to make an investment, you should make it through an entity, not in your personal account. And uh, you know, regarding taxes, um, you know, a lot of my colleagues are in you know, areas of the world where the taxes are lower and where there's no capital gains tax. And uh, you know, although you would file a U.S. tax return, fortunately, uh, the tax rules regarding real estate and syndicated investments are actually very favorable. Uh, there's a significant amount of uh, depreciation which you can take, which is a paper loss. So in, in general, uh, the taxes that would be paid on these investments are, are minimal and are often deferred until the asset sells. And when that asset sells, there's actually other avenues to uh, you know, reinvest and uh, often defer those taxes even further. So I, I would, would certainly say that you know, taxes shouldn't be a deciding factor on, on whether or not to, uh, to make, a, make an investment into U.S. real estate. So in summary, if you're, if you're looking to invest into the U.S., uh, you know, first you can get your uh, bank account and uh, entity set up. And um, then uh, you, know, you should familiarize yourself with uh, suitable funds or syndications that are available. Um, JCAM Investments, who sponsors this podcast, uh, is one of them. And uh, those are offered either through a Reg S, if it's uh, focused uh, more specifically on international investors, or through what's called a Reg D. And uh, these are funds where uh, the uh, form is filed with the SEC, but uh, they're exempt from the, the types of reporting that a public company would do just because they're um, targeted towards accredited investors. And um, if you're a foreign investor in general, um, most funds still will, will generally want to do the diligence to, you know, make sure that you're in a similar position to what a U.S. investor would need to be, which is called an accredited investor. 
Um, so that just means that you have either a net worth of a million U.S. dollars or uh, an income of over 300000 per year if married or 200 if single. And um, that's something that many funds, even if they're, even if you're not required to the dollar as a foreign investor, you know, you want to make sure you're working with someone who is not putting their last few dollars into, into an investment. So the funds may want to ask for some information. And uh, for us, for example, our funds, we use a third party group. So we don't need to see anyone's financial information. We just have you send it. It's actually a group owned by an attorney and they'll verify um, you know, uh, proof of funds, a bank account, or you know, the equivalent tax returns, just to show that you're accredited and and, uh, and that you're um, you know capable of investing in these offerings. Um, next, uh, you know, you should uh, perform due diligence, um, check references, uh, understand the underlying properties. I, I've glossed over this at a high level that I that I think uh, investing in in funds and syndications are superior to buying an individual property. Uh, but uh, you know, get on mailing lists for groups like ours and others that are uh, putting out uh, offerings and get to understand what the cash on cash returns look like, what the projected overall returns look like, and, uh, and what the risk factors are. Um, the private placement that I mentioned has, in general, there's 50 pages of everything that can go wrong. So you know, it, it's, it's really the, the, what I'd call throwing the kitchen sink at all the possible scenarios and things that could go wrong, um, but it does. It's you know it's legally required and it, it shows you the you know all all it just covers all the possible scenarios. Yeah, you know, for example, if a private placement was done in 2019, they may not have included uh, you know a pandemic, uh, but now certainly all all future offerings are going to say there's a risk factor for uh, a future pandemic. And, and lastly, you know, build a good team um, that includes. Uh, Hopefully, uh, you know, people like us that, uh, you know, both are, are in the business of, of, of running funds, but also we, we, we love to network and connect, um, having a great attorney, a great uh, CPA, and uh, we have a few CPAs that, that focus and are, are, work great with uh, cross-border cross investments and international investors. And um, you know, if you have those things, um, you, should, you should be very successful in uh, investing internationally. And uh, lastly, if you have the ability to travel, come to an event. Uh, there's a lot of uh, great conferences, trade shows, um, abilities to, to meet both uh, a lot of uh, investor and fund managers and investment uh, firms, but also other passive investors, both locally and internationally, that are investing as well. So uh, it's a great experience and uh, really a great way to, to learn uh, as much as possible, as fast as possible, and meet like-minded people that are uh, also investing in the similar business. So that's about it for today's episode. Please uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, uh, iTunes, Spotify, or your platform of choice, and connect with us on social media. Uh, the a a Alternative Investor Mastermind also has a Facebook group. So um, join the group. There'll be some exclusive content to the group, and uh, yeah, we're going to start going live on their um, you know, every week or so, uh, do live Q and A's um, and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great resource with a lot of like, like-minded investors. So please join. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next week. That's all for this episode of alternative investor mastermind. Now that you know the many alternative opportunities out there all up for the taking, you can finally become ultra connected and ultra wealthy. Get more valuable advice from the experts by subscribing to the show at alternative investor mastermind.com. Become a winner in the world of passive investing today in alternative investment strategies. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.